It's been a while, so it's good to check back. This is a good time to check back in, I think. So I'm going to start with what I've been going through lately, and I'll quickly tell you about that, and then I'm going to get into the corona market stuff. So we went to Florida, three time zones away with a young child. Felt like we stayed too long. I tried to force a lot of stuff and work in a different environment with poor sleep and distractions, and it just did not turn out well for me. I've been... I've made this mistake too many damn times and it's just very irritating that I had to make it again and I kind of brought that with me back home a little bit and to make a long story short, I've started the year not the best footing, especially since I finished strong last year. So this crash happened and I wasn't really able to take advantage of it like I would have wanted to. I lost a little bit of money in it so far. Most of the damage I did to myself was before this crash this week. So I'm kind of refocusing next week. And that's where I'm sitting right now. So there's a lot of lessons in that for me. Um, I'm sure you can figure some of the obvious ones out, but I can touch back on that later. But in terms of where we are now, I think, so for me, as I've talked about, I'm moving towards my extending my time frames, but I'm going to have to put that on pause a little bit and shorten my time frames. I think, because the volatility is so high. So there's going to be more day trading opportunities, more two to three day swing trade opportunities, And then when these longer-term opportunities set up, I'm going to be ready for those as well. But I think it's unclear right now. And in terms of what's going to happen with the market, I mean, there's so many things. I could could give you so many bullish and bearish counterpoints. The yield curve doesn't matter. Now it does matter. Um, You know, the crazy excess buying in the Tesla blow-off, all these things that could signal a top... um, there's so many things I could say, but the biggest thing that is the top of my mind that matters the most is the pendulum always swings both ways. And I think it swung pretty hard to the bullish side with record levels of call buying. And I don't think people fear risk. They don't, they don't fear being hurt by buy and hold. They don't think American stocks can ever go down or have a rough period. And we've seen one V bottom after another. And I don't know how this plays out exactly, But I think the virus is just something that kicked this over right now. And it's a legitimate threat to the economy for a while, at least. And sure, it'll slow down in the summer and probably pick up next winter. And once we get more information and vaccines, it'll, even if it gets much higher in numbers, it'll probably be less of an effect on, excuse me, on the market because you're going to have a situation where people know the news is bad, but we know what it is. We understand all the details, which we don't quite understand. So that'll be a good thing to some extent. But In terms of how, how, what else is hidden out there, I don't know. Usually big crashes are when there's debt. Um, 2008, there was bank debt. 2000 was margin debt. 1998 was long-term capital management crisis debt. 1987 was the portfolio insurance and the futures, which was kind of a form of debt. And it's not always the case, but if it's a real nasty bear market, it's usually because someone's stuck and they got to unwind some nasty debt. I don't know if we have that going on right now. I can't find it. I don't, um, maybe something's going to rear its head and come out of left field. But I don't think it's just the virus. I think there's other things that are... There's The wall of worry has kind of disappeared previous to the virus with Iran and Brexit and North Korea. Those things are kind of still out there, but they went away and, and they helped bid the market up. Everyone was worried about a crash. And then we get something out of left field that causes a crash and then everyone wants to buy right away and people aren't fearing it. And all of a sudden you start getting more, more stuff coming out. So it sounds like I'm super negative on it now. I'm kind of just neutral negative, I would say. Probably going to be really big trading rallies to take advantage of, which I'll work on doing. And lots of opportunities, tons of stupid news I'm sure will happen with all these tweets and articles. But just with all the Trump tweets since he's been elected and all the giddiness in the market, and we have an election year. This is going to be a hell of a time to watch the market. And I'm not sure anyone knows what's going to happen next. But I keep thinking that pendulum swung pretty far one way. And it's going to have to find a way to swing back. The recent example in my head is Bitcoin goes from nothing to 20,000. Crazy move. No one thought it would go that far. And then it goes all the way down to 3,000 and then settles back in the middle. And that's just an example of you know, the excess kind of winds off on both edges. And you even see it in your temperament too. It's like, even as humans, when we have a mood that goes one way, it kind of tends, people who are really euphoric tend to get really sad or angry. And there's a balancing effect there. 
And people who are more stable tend to stay in the edges or in the middle bands a little bit more. They don't fly off to either side. The market is very similar to that. You could make a lot of different metaphors and, and look at things like that, but I think we got pretty crazy on the upside. So yeah, it's it's a little dangerous to predict that that's over now. And people are so conditioned to get in there right away and buy that dip because it never comes again. We saw many times how that dip just disappears and we walk that thing right back up to the highs. And I'm sure the Fed will be involved and all that stuff and tax cuts will be promised. But I don't know if that, when, when it breaks, it tends to break and it changes sentiment and the mood. So that's in the back of my head right now. So I'm going to kind of punt on that and watch what happens and wait for those longer term opportunities and then just stay a little bit lighter and a little bit shorter term with my stuff where I could see what's coming next because it's a little murky at the moment.